en quoi tu Président, please be seated. Président, veuillez vous asseoir. Today, the chamber will hear the testimony of a, a witness to TCW 880. And we also have a, a reserve witness today, that is to TCW 883. Ms. Sekobote, please report the attendance of the parties and other individuals at today's proceedings. Graffier. Mr. President, for today's proceedings, all parties to this case are present. Mr. Nunji is present in the holding cell downstairs. He has waived his right to be present in a courtroom. The waiver has been delivered to the graffiti. A witness who is to testify today, namely to TCW 880, confirms that, to the best of his knowledge, he has no relationship by blood or by law to any of the two accused, that is, no G and Q some form, or to any of the zero parties admitted in this case. The witness took an oath before the Iron Club statute this morning. And we also have a reserve witness today, that is to TCW883, who will testify before the, his appearance. President, thank you, Ms. Sakaboti. The Chamber now decides on the request by Nunchir. The Chamber has received a waiver from Nunchir dated 14 September 2015, which notes that due to his health, headache, back pain, he cannot sit or concentrate for long, and in order to effectively participate in future hearings, he requests to waive his right to participate in and be present at the 14 September 2015 hearing. He affirms that his counsel has advised him about the consequences of this waiver, that it cannot in any account be construed as a waiver of his rights to be tried fairly or to challenge evidence presented to or admitted by this court at any time during this trial. Having seen the medical report of Nunji by the duty doctor for the accused at the ECCC dated 14 September 2015, which notes that Nunji has back pain and dizziness when he sits and recommends that the chamber grant him his request so that he can follow the proceedings remotely from holding cell downstairs. Based on the above information and pursuant to Rule 815 of the ECCC in rules, the Chamber grants Nunji his request to follow today's proceedings remotely from the holding cell downstairs via audiovisual means. And the Chamber instructs the AV unit personnel to lead the proceedings to the room downstairs so that he can follow the proceedings. This applies to the whole day. Court officer, please as a witness to TCW 880 in the
Sufrai Lok Sai Ta Lok Moi. What is your name? Le président. Bonjour, monsieur le témoin. Comment vous appelez-vous? Witness, my name is Seng Srun. Je m'appelle Seng Srun. President, Question. thank you. And when were you born, Mr. Seng Srun? Monsieur Seng Srun, quand êtes-vous né? And Mr. Seng Srun, please uh, observe the microphone. You can only speak when the Veuillez red light is le voyant rouge lit on. Pour And so I was born in January 1949. President, and where were you born? Question. Quel est votre lieu de naissance? Answer. Réponse. I was born in Sambomir Ko village. Dans le village de Sambomir Ko, Kampong Cham. À Kampong dans Kampong Cham. Question. And where is your current address? Quel est votre adresse actuelle? Answer. Réponse. Currently, I'm still living in Sambomirko village. Dans le village de Sambomirko, province. Dans la province de Kampongcham. Question. And what is your current occupation? Quelle est votre profession? Answer. I am a rice farmer. Je suis riziculteur. President, thank you. And what are the names of your parents? Question. Comment s'appellent vos parents? Answer. My father is Ma Hu and Mon my mother Ma is Hu Sim. Et ma mère s'appelle Hu Sim. President, thank you. And what is the name of your wife and Question. how many Comment children do you have? Et combien d'enfants avez-vous? Answer. My wife's Réponse. name is Sam Trun and we have seven children together. President, thank you, Mr. Sain Trun. The greffier made an oral report that, to the best of your knowledge, none of your that you are not related to any other two accused, no two accused in porn. Aucun lien de parenté, par alliance ou par le sang, avec le ou any of the civil parties admitted in this case, is this information yes. correct? Bien le cas. And so, yes, that Réponse. is correct. Oui, c'est exact. Question. Question. Have you taken an oath before the Iron Cross statue? Avez-vous également prêté serment devant la statue du génie à la barre de fin? And so, yes, Réponse. I have. Oui. And the chamber now wish, wishes to inform you of your rights and obligations. Permettez-moi à présent de vous énoncer vos droits et obligations. As a witness before the chamber, vous you may refuse to témoin. respond to any question that may incriminate you, Moi, that is right to the case of incrimination. And following is uh, your obligation as a witness in the proceedings témoin, before the chamber, you must respond to any questions, questions by the bench or relevant juge, uh, parties, except where your response or comments to those questions nature, may incriminate you as the chamber has just informed you of your right as a witness. And you must tell the truth that you have known, heard, vous pouvez, vous seen, dire la vérité, remember, or that you experience or observe directly about an event or occurrence relevant to the questions that question the bench or parties or party. pose to you. And Mr. Sainz-Ron, have you been interviewed by investigators of the Office of the Co. Investigating Judges? If so, how many times, when, and where? Si oui, combien de fois, quand et où? Answer. I. Réponse. Have been interviewed for about five times. Cinq fois. And that uh, happened at uh, my residence in my et village. Et à mon domicile, dans mon village. Question, Question, and do you recall when those interviews uh, took place? Vous souvenez-vous de la date de ces entretiens? And uh, the first Réponse. one was uh, likely uh, la in fois, 2008. Sans doute en 2008. Question, 
And when was Question. your last interview taken place? Et quelle était la date de votre dernière audition? And the réponse. It happened in around 2012 or 2013. President, thank you. And before Question. your appearance this morning, have you reviewed or read the written records of your statements? And as you just said, uh, during the five interviews, that the first one happened in around 2008, and the last one uh, took place in around 2012 or 2013, in order to refresh your memory. Answer. Réponse. I have uh, read some of those documents. J'ai lu certains de ces documents. Question. Question. And to your best recollection, can you inform the court whether the written records of your statements are consistent si les qui sur ces with what you said during those uh, interviews dans le cadre de ces that uh, took place at your village? Qui ont eu lieu dans votre village? Answer. After Réponse. I read uh, those documents, I confirmed that uh, those were the documents. statements that I made before those investigators. President, thank you. And uh, pursuant to 91 bis of the ECCC Merci. internal rules, the chamber grants the floor first uh, to the co-prosecutors for the question to this witness. And the combined time for the co-prosecutors and the lead co-lawyers uh, is a true session, and you may uh, proceed now. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Good morning, uh, Your Honors, uh, Council. Good morning, Mr. Singh Saroon. I don't know if you remember me. I was one of the OCP, uh, part of the OCP team that interviewed you, interviewed you back in 2008. Uh, thank you for uh, coming here today. I wanted to start with a few questions uh, about your background. Um, in your first OCIJ interview, uh, you talk about fleeing to the Maquis to join the revolution in 1971 and being appointed a platoon commander in Battalion 305, where you were in charge of 36 men, and you describe participating in combat in various locations, including Camp on Tom, Pursat, and Phnom Penh. Uh, I just wanted to ask you what uh, army, uh, what zone or sector or district uh, was Battalion 305 part of? Answer. The battalion 305 that I was attached to Le was 305, part of dont je zone 304, that is the northern zone, and it was in sector 30. Dans le sector 30. During the 1970 period, early 1970s, you've indicated that your sector was called uh, sector 30. Do you remember whether the sector number changed uh, after 1975? In 1975, the sector number remained the same. And in the same interview, you described uh, being in the uh, Battalion 305, part of the North Zone Army, uh, 
In 1976, after my unit was uh, dissolved, I was uh, sent uh, to return to my village and I was placed in a mobile unit to work at uh, various plantations and at uh, various uh, work sites. Were you arrested for a period when you first vous went back to your home village? Certain period, when you were entered in your village natal. After I returned to my village and before I was uh, placed into a village, avant mobile unit, unit mobile, I was detained for a period of ten days. Pendant dix jours. Do you know why you were detained for 10 days when you went back to your home village? They did not give me any reason or mistakes that I made when they arrested me. The militia came to arrest me and I did not know anything at all or the reason for my arrest. Can you identify who was in charge of the militia in Pim Chikam commune, uh, in charge of the militia who arrested you? Amongst those who came to arrest me, there was Nam, who was in charge of security. I only know him by his revolutionary name, Nam. And there was also another chief of security of the PMT Corps commune by the name of Samrut. After you were released, uh, after your 10 days of detention in 1976, uh, where did you live and what were you assigned to do? After I was released, and that uh, took place in 1976, I was arranged to marry a woman. On organisé mon mariage avec une femme. Then I was assigned to work in a mobile unit to work at various work sites. And the mobile unit you were assigned to, uh, was this a commune unit, uh, a district unit, or a sector unit? Uh, can you clarify that for us? Je vous prie de nous apporter cette précision. The Réponse. unit that I was attached to was a, a sector mobile unit. Était une unité mobile de sector. And who was your unit chief? Question. Comment s'appelait votre chef d'unité? To. Noi was my unit chief. Tuk Noi. Uh, 
Uh, in, in your interviews, you also identify uh, a person named Hun, who you describe as a unit chief. Uh, can you describe the difference uh, in the uh, uh, positions of Nui and Hun? In fact, it was Hon, en not Hun. En fait, Hon, pas Hun. Noi was in charge of a mobile Noé unit at a the work site, at a particular work site, un site de as Hon. Hon was Alors in charge Hon of a security of a Kong Mi district. Dans le district de Kong Mi. And he usually buys at a pagoda uh, called Moni Sarawan. Dans une pagode du nom de Moni Sarawan. You'll have to forgive my pronunciation. Uh, I was uh, trying to ask you about a different person. Um, this person uh, you've identified as a unit chief in your village, Sambo. Uh, Mia village de a village, ah. uh, and uh, the name uh, uh, seems to be Hun, Le not not Hun, but Hun. 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 Do you remember Hun. a person who was a unit chief in charge Le of chef Sambo Mia uh, village? Du village de Sambo -Mia. It was Hoon, who was a unit chief at the village, and Hoon passed away. In fact, he just passed away, and his seven-day anniversary is today. D'ailleurs, aujourd'hui, c'est le septième anniversaire de son décès. Thank you for for clarifying that. I want to uh, turn now to some questions okay. about the Cham people in your commune, Pim Chikong commune. Uh, at the time you left to join uh, the military in the early 1970s, uh, were there any Cham in your commune? Uh, and if so, in what villages? In uh, 1970, Réponse. there were many young people living in the Pim Chikong commune, and I knew some of them just through Jean my uh, uh, contacts, uh, through farming, etc. But I did not know many uh, of them. I know uh, some, like men. And par exemple, him, man et him. as they uh, were my neighbors and they also worked uh, in the rice field. Et aussi travaillé dans les rizières. What were the biggest Cham villages uh, in your commune back at that time? Quels étaient les villages Cham les plus peuplés dans votre commune à cette époque-là? Réponse. And uh, it was Saxo village le where village Saxo. Uh, many Cham people resided, and Tung So was another a village Tung with Tung many Cham people living. Do you remember back then approximately how many Cham families they were, or how many Cham people there were in Saxo village? Combien de chambres il y avait? I do not know the total number of the champ people bon, living in Saxo. However, from what I uh, could observe, d'après mes observations. There were uh, approximately 1,000 Cham people living in Saxo. Saxo.
Was Kong Mia District located on the, the Mekong River the uh, and were the Cham villages you've identified, were they located on or close to the Mekong? The uh, majority of the Cham people live the along the, the uh, Mekong River as their business uh, was mainly uh, fishing. 80% of them uh, uh, fished while 20 uh, worked in the rice field or plantation. Was there a mosque? Uh, in Saxo village. In Saxo village, there was a mosque, oui, and there mosquée. was also another mosque in Dongso. Now I want to move to the a uh, period when you returned uh, to your commune in early 1976. Uh, when you came back in 1976, uh, were all the Cham families still in Saxo village at that time? The Cham people were sent to live mixed uh, with the Cambodian, uh, with the Khmer people in the villages. They were segregated uh, to live amongst uh, the Khmer people. And uh, apart from the people who had been moved um, to live among uh, Khmer, uh, were there any Cham families that were still allowed to stay in Saxo village at that time? In Saxo village, Cham people uh, were sent to live there while they were spread Les out to live in various villages within the commune. And when the Cham people were spread out among the commune or district, uh, were there any Cham families who were sent to uh, your village, Sambo Mia A village? The Cham people in Sambomir A were from uh, Saxo. Perhaps 20 families uh, of Cham people were from Saxo. Were you ever told why? Uh, the Cham families had been moved out of Saxo village and spread around different areas uh, in your commune and district. I do not know the reason Cham people were uh, segregated. And when you came back to Pim Chikong in early 1976, uh, were the Cham people in the commune still allowed to practice their religion, to speak the Cham language, to dress in traditional Cham clothes? Answer. In 1976, Cham people were prohibited from practicing 
their religion and as for their clothes they were not allowed to wear traditional uh, clothes for Cham people they were required to wear the same clothes as Khmer people on leur a ordonné de porter les mêmes vêtements que les Khmer Mr. Witness, do, do you know whether there were any uh, rebellions or protests of the Cham people uh, by the Cham people in Kangmia district uh, during the Khmer Rouge regime? In Kangmia district. Dans le district de Generally speaking, de façon générale, there were no activities against uh, Khmer Rouge, and uh, they did Rouge. not protest uh, against Khmer Rouge uh, because some of them they were Rouge afraid of Khmer Rouge at the time. What happened to the mosques in Saxo village and and Tung Sol village uh, in 1976 uh, when the Cham people were no longer allowed to practice their religion. Answer. Regarding mosques, réponse en ce qui concerne la mosquée those mosques were turned to be shelters for Khmer people and Cham people to live in. Cham mosques uh, were turned into warehouse for storing uh, food supplies and rice. Uh, Cham people were not allowed Les to enter uh, the mosque. The compound of the mosque were turned into shelters. Et l'enceinte des mosquées a été transformée en site d'entreposage. I, I want to turn now to some uh, general questions about Merci. Uh, a pagoda in your commune uh, named Wat Ho Chakun. Um, when you returned to Pim Chikong, in 1976, uh, did you live close to Wat Otrakun? But in 1976, I was living close to Otrakun Pagoda. The distance from my house to Otrakun Pagoda was was about 200 meters away. Was your house on the road uh, that went to Wat Ochakun? Answer. Réponse. My house was located on the road. It was about a uh, 70 meters away uh, from the road, I mean my house. When you first got back to Pim Chikong in early 1976, uh, were there still monks at Wat Ochakun at that time? Answer. After my return in 1976, monks were disrobed. And what was Wat Ochakun used for uh, after the monks were disrobed? Answer. After monks had been disrobed, Une fois que les ont été the pagoda was turned into a security center to detain de uh, people. Pour y en des gens. You have stated that 
your house, the house you lived in, was uh, near the road that went to Wat Chukun and about 200 meters uh, from the pagoda. Uh, did you ever see prisoners being taken to the pagoda compound? Uh, and if so, how often did you see uh, people uh, being taken to Wat Ochakun? No answer. I saw the transportation of uh, people into the pagoda on a daily basis. Quotidiennement à la pagoda. Uh, most people were transported uh, inside the compound of the pagoda, but not from the, the compound of the pagoda to elsewhere. Mais ne ressortait pas de la pagoda. Il n'y avait pas de transport de gens depuis la pagoda. Uh, during the Khmer Rouge uh, period, uh, were there any walls that Question surrounded the Wat Ochakun compound? Y murs qui de la pagode Answer. During Khmer Rouge time, after Khmer Rouge created uh, the security center within the compound of the pagoda, the barbed wire fence uh, was uh, installed to cover the uh, prison. But before that, there was no wall or any barbed wire fence. And this barbed wire fence, uh, uh, was it something that you could see through from the outside, or was it a solid fence that kept you from seeing uh, the inside of the compound? At the beginning, when the, the security center was Created, uh, début, people could walk close to the bab wire fence. Later on, in 1977, uh, we 1977, were not allowed to walk uh, past uh, the gate of the pagoda. Before that time, uh, we could uh, see uh, prisoners uh, inside uh, the pagoda. And from your house, uh, that was 200 meters from Wat Ochakun, uh, were you able to hear sounds coming from the pagoda uh, at night time? Answer. When the people were taken to be killed, the music were played from 7 p.m. until 10 p.m., during which people were killed. No screaming, no crying were heard from the compound of the pagoda because of the loud music played through the loudspeakers. Could you hear the music from your house? Question. Pouviez-vous entendre la musique depuis votre maison? Answer. Yes. Réponse. Oui. The people living close to the road could hear the music being played. We could not hear the screaming or crying, On but the loud music. And when you say that music was played, uh, on these loud speakers. What, what kind of music? Can, can you tell us uh, uh, what you remember about what was played on the loudspeakers? Answer. It was music from Popot time and the music was composed by 
la musique était Pol Pot composée régime, par I le could régime not de tell you the content of the music, the, the newly uh, uh, music. composed music by Pol Pot uh, era. nouvelle musique, c'était de la musique nouvelle composée à l'ère de Pol Pot. And how did you know Question. that you, you said a few minutes ago that they played uh, music on the loudspeakers when they were executing people? Uh, how did you know that? Answer. During the time the music Réponse. was being played, and the people were diffusée, killed, uh, I was assigned uh, to climb the sugar palm tree. Security guards uh, were also assigned to cli climb uh, sugar palm trees. So I had uh, contact and conversation contact with conversation. the security guard Moon, who was the security guard un, un and had the sécurité. work assignment as me, told me that uh, whenever the music was being played, diffusée, it was the time that prisoners were taken away and killed. The music was uh, played to prevent all of us uh, from hearing the screaming and the crying. Let me tell you that uh, the Music uh, was not uh, played on a daily basis. Sometimes it was parfois. played on the one particular event. And uh, Muen, who was the climber of the sugar palm tree, uh, told me about uh, that incident. Let me uh, ask you a little bit about your um, work as a palm tree climber. Um, you lived close to Wat Ochukun. Uh, when you worked uh, as a palm tree climber from 1976 to 1978, uh, did you also work uh, close to Wat Ochukun? Answer, yes. I was a climber uh, close to the complex of the Otokun Pagoda. How far were the palm trees uh, where you worked uh, from Wat Otokun? À quelle distance se trouvaient les palmiers sur lesquels vous travaillez par rapport à Wat Otokun? Answer. The Palm trees were located about 20 meters away from the fence of that pagoda. I want to turn now to some questions uh, about the arrival of uh, cadres from the southwest zone uh, in your area. Uh, can you describe for the court what you remember about the arrival of the southwest cadres and specifically what happened to the north zone cadres at that time? Answer. Réponse. M most chief of security were from uh, 304. However, la later la on, the no southwest zone cadres uh, came to replace the previous cadres. Kun, who was the chief Kun, of security center at Otokun Pagoda, À la pagode de Otrakun, was replaced a by Southwest Zone cadres. Before the arrival of uh, Southwest Zone cadres, uh, the cadres from the North Zone uh, were in charge of uh, 
Otakuan Security Center. A few months later, Southwest Zone cadres were sent to replace uh, Northwest Zone. North Zone cadres. Kund was still in the position of a security center at that time, and later on, I heard that Kund was reassigned to upper level office, and the south or west. Southwest zone cadres who came uh, to replace Kund uh, told me that Kund had been sent to district security center to be killed. But at that time, uh, we were not told that Kund was sent away to be killed, but that Kund had been uh, promoted to the upper level. Most of the Cadres in senior position during that time that were killed, and the Southwest Zone cadres were sent to replace uh, those uh, North Zone cadres. So uh, the old chief of security center at Otrakund uh, was arrested and sent away. And what about the uh, North Zone cadres who were uh, at the commune and district level in your area? Uh, what happened to them when the Southwest Zone people arrived? Answer. After their arrival in 304 Zone, Chief of Sangat and military had all been arrested and killed. These people had a previous position in the district and communes. They had all been arrested and killed. Want to read to you um, one uh, excerpt from. Uh, your OCIJ interview E3 slash 8736, E3 8736, and this is uh, from answers two through answer four. Uh, you testified, quote, when the Southwest, Southwest zoners arrived, the North zoners were arrested on the allegation that they betrayed with Khoi Tun. Question. How was the situation of those arrested after that? Answer. They all died. They were killed, especially those who were linked with the network of Tuch and Sreng. Question. Did you witness the killing or did you just hear about it? Answer. For the upper levels, I did not know. But for the local levels, such as commune levels, who were accused of being the network of Khoi Tun, they were killed at Wat Ochakun Pagoda. It was Tak Khan, the new southwest zoner, who ordered the killing, end of quote. My first um, question uh, for clarification here, uh, who was it that told you that the North Zone cadres were accused of being part of the network of former Zone Secretary Khoi Tun? Answer on that matter, I did not uh, follow close uh, the situation. Comrade Kang, who was chief of Songkat together with a comrade E, who was uh, also the Songkat chief, uh, were arrested uh, together with Nam. Comrade Kain, who was also chief of Sankat, 
was also arrested. As I told you earlier, at the beginning, uh, people were allowed to walk uh, past the old Draguna Pagoda. When I, at one time, when I uh, walked past the Pagoda, uh, I understood that Comrade Kang was killed within the, the classroom of the uh, pagoda, his uh, legs uh, were tied, ups he was tied upside down. Can you identify for the court um, the new cadres from the southwest who came and took over uh, as um, Pim Chikong commune chief? The Kong Mia district secretary uh, and sector secretary. Uh, can you identify who took over those positions when the Southwest cadres arrived? I would like to tell the chamber that during the times that the uh, previous uh, cadres had uh, were all arrested, uh, the southwest uh, cadres came to take control. Comrade and I do not know his uh, surname, was the chief of uh, 30 sector. And within Kongmir district, Khan had uh, overall supervision of Kongmir, and his wife's name was a Piep, Piep, who was the deputy. And as for the new chief for Sankat, the, there was an individual came. They came, they, all of them came to replace the previous cadre who had been uh, arrested and sent away. When was it that uh, the Southwest cadres arrived uh, and the old North Zone cadres were arrested and taken away? Quel moment était-ce? À quel moment est-ce que les anciens cadres de la zone nord ont été arrêtés et emmenés? Answer. North uh, zone cadres Réponse. Les were cadres de la zone arrested nord ont in été arrêtés perhaps 1976 or 1977 en 1976, to my recollection. They were arrested in 1976, if I'm not mistaken. Some of them uh, were arrested in 1976, and uh, all of uh, the, these cadres uh, were arrested in 1977. Uh, Mr. President, uh, with your leave, I'd like to provide uh, at this time a uh, two uh, S-21 records uh, to the witness uh, to have uh, him uh, identify some people, but also to uh, refresh his recollection on the timing of uh, the arrests of the cadres from his region. Uh, these two documents are E3-2956, E3-2956, uh, and E3-3861, uh, E3-3861. Uh, I'll uh, wait for uh, council's objection at this point. Thank you, um, Mr. Prosecutor. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Uh, good morning. Yes, I object to this question. Um, I also know what the decision is going to be, but for the record, I object. This witness uh, has nothing intelligent to say about S21 records. If he wants to have certain names identified, the prosecution um, could uh, mention these names. Uh, this witness didn't work for S21, didn't work in security. Um, um, section of sector 30 or sector 41. So I object to um, these lines of questions.
If I may respond, Mr. President, um, the purpose, and this is something we've done before, uh, is first to help establish uh, the actual timing uh, when these arrests occurred, uh, and second, um, uh, we've provided the documents to the witnesses because sometimes it is easier to recognize the names when they can look at them uh, rather than hear them from uh, my, my mouth. President, the objection by Victor Cope, the defense counsel for Mr. Nunchi, to the, uh, the request to present two documents, is overruled since uh, the reasons uh, raised by co prosecutor are reasonable. The presentation uh, would, uh, will not uh, present the whole the content of the documents, but just to quote some of uh, the information inside. So you may not proceed, co-prosecutor. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. Witness, you've been handed two documents. Um, if you could start with the first document, which is E3-2956. Uh, uh, this is a S21 uh, prisoner list titled List of Persons from the North Zone, uh, 1 February 1977 to 27 March 1977, which identifies 84 uh, North Zone cadres uh, who were arrested and sent to S21 between, between mid-February and the end of March 1977. If you could look at the first name uh, on the list, on that list, uh, Mr. Witness, uh, number one is Chor Chan alias Sreng uh, from the Zone Standing Committee, uh, who is recorded as having entered S21 on 18 February 1977. Do you remember Sreng? We are training Tandia Pochmo Dam. We are training Tandia Pochmo Dam. We are training Tandia Pochmo However, a string that I know was chief of a zone, the chief of zone, and that after the arrest of Kai Pok and Koi Thun, he came to uh, be in charge of the uh, zonal position. And as I said, I do not know the full name of this individual. If you could look uh, now at the second uh, list, the second document, which is E3-3861, uh, and if you could look at number 103 uh, on that list, number 103, uh, this is a list uh, of the S21 document titled List of Prisoners Smashed on 8 July 1977 from the North Zone, uh, which identifies 173 prisoners from the North Zone who were killed at S21 that day. And number 103 on the list, uh, which I've highlighted, 
uh, is Chun Chum alias Tang, a secretary of Sector 41 of the North Zone, uh, who is recorded as having entered S-21 on the 18th of February, 1977, uh, the same date as Sreng. A Tang also appears as Tang number 56 uh, on the other uh, list, E3-2956. Uh, My question for you, do you remember a, a leader from your region named Tang? It was not Tang, but Tang. Uh, it was called that Tang, and I know this person Tang. clearly. Tang, he was a former Kongme district chief. It was Tang, not Tang. Tang However, Tang. I do not know his uh, full name or his uh, birth name. He was a former Kongme district chief, and later on he was transferred to Sector 41. Mr. Witness, uh, do these records uh, refresh your memory uh, that it was early 1977 uh, possibly February 1977, uh, rather than 1976, uh, when the Southwest cadres arrived and the North Zone cadres were arrested. Whether uh, he remembers in 76 or 77, it is very difficult to pinpoint the exact date, as we do not have any calendar to refer to, and it's possible that it happened in late 76 or early 77, but I cannot give you an exact uh, date or month, as we did not have a calendar to refer to. At the time. Uh, fair enough. Uh, before you put away uh, the lists, uh, while you're looking again at E3-3861, E3-3861, if you could look at number 35 on that list, number 35 is Chun Ol alias Mia, Secretary of Kang Mia District, who had entered S-21 on 26 February 1977, and that's number 35, Chun O alias Mia. Uh, do you remember uh, a man named Mia who served as Kang Mia District Secretary? De Kang yes, Réponse. I know oui. Mia, but I do not know Chun Ol, that's the uh, birth name. And as I said, during the Khmer Rouge regime, you usually we only know General, on first on name of a person. Later on, he, uh, during the period, he was uh, appointed uh, to be in charge of uh, military of the Kong uh, district. Uh, thank you uh, for uh, looking at those documents. I want to turn now to a, uh, uh, a question uh, after after the arrival of the Southwest cadres, uh, do you remember being called to attend a meeting uh, at which the new sector secretary gave a speech? The new district secretary 
did not uh, call people to uh, meetings. However, I recall Anne, who was in charge of uh, the sector, actually uh, convened a meeting and people were called uh, to go to what Otrokun. Uh, Khan was there, but he did not uh, take a stand, and it was Anne who uh, spoke uh, during that meeting. Did Anne say anything at that meeting uh, about the old North Zone cadres and why they had been arrested? He spoke to, uh, at length uh, during the meeting. He spoke about the cadres uh, in the north zone and accused them of uh, being traitors. He also uh, talked about the living condition of the people. And he uh, meant that in our cooperatives, he wanted to find out which cadres actually forced the people Et to consume thin gruel. Qui dans nos coopératives forçait les gens he also spoke about the private plantation of a vegetable at our house and that uh, there was no prohibition for people privés, uh, to consume whatever vegetable that uh, we planted. Les, les and he said those cadres who were arrested uh, because they betrayed uh, Anka and betrayed Le the revolution, and he said he wanted the uh, people Et to uh, eat food uh, at uh, our uh, uh, content and filled our uh, uh, stomach. Uh, but to us, we understood uh, that uh, it was a lie. En fait and when he spoke uh, about uh, anyone who, or any chief who prohibited us from consuming manger, the vegetable that we planted, actually, we were very happy to hear that. And in fact, his uh, real purpose was for us to en fait, report uh, to him about those chiefs who uh, banned us uh, from eating vegetable that we planted. Que nous and actually, during the meeting, he also uh, announced that Pendant if any chief or anyone in charge of the kitchen si did not give us uh, enough food to eat, then we should uh, make a manger, complaint to him. At the end of the meeting, three people actually et, came up to him to complain. There is to a can's place in PMG Kong. And they complain about Yunis chiefs who banned them from uh, consuming their vegetable as they planted. Actually, they went uh, at around 9 o'clock and they returned at around 10.30 or 11. And upon their arrival at their respective uh, houses, an outcast actually maison, came to uh, their houses and arrested them and sent them to Otokun Pagoda. And that's what I know about the strategy and uh, Jews uh, during the meeting and while he was there. Uh, thank you. I, I want to follow up uh, on the location of this meeting, uh, you've indicated that it took place at Wat Ochakun. Uh, I want to read to you uh, an interview of uh, an excerpt from an interview of a person you have identified uh, as a chief of the Team Chikong Militia. Uh, I won't name him by name, Your Honors, it's 2 TCW 883. Uh, the interview is E3 9346, E3 slash 9346, Khmer ERN 0025016. English 00235508 and French 00283948 and 
Uh, he describes uh, also a meeting uh, held by the new uh, sector secretary. Um, this is what he said, quote, in early 1977, they held a meeting at the Peem Stadium. All the villagers had to attend. The sector committee secretary on and the district committee secretary Khan convened the meeting and told us to work hard for Ankar. Then they said that there were enemies among the people. After that meeting, the arrests accelerated both day and night, end of quote. Uh, this witness describes a meeting as taking place at Peem Stadium. Uh, can you tell us what Peem Stadium was and where it was located? At the PM uh, Stadium. Uh, Stadium, which and it was located opposite the, the uh, PM Chikong School. En fait en face de de and Pim I did not attend uh, that meeting. Pas à cette what I told you was from the Moi, uh, what I relaté, knew or and heard uh, de ce que vu, at the meeting que that was held at Otaku and Pagoda. Of course, I was at Sambumi, and we Moi, were prohibited from crossing to another uh, commune. Even I had some relatives living in Pim Chikong commune, Pim but I could Pim not Chikong uh, make any contact uh, with them at all. We were prohibited from uh, doing so. So, uh, in brief, I did not know about the meeting that Bref, was held at the other stadium. And if there were a meeting where the uh, instructions for the arrest uh, had to be carried out si through the announcement, it's likely that we, the honorary uh, villagers, would not be allowed to attend uh, such a meeting. And so the meeting at Wat Ochukun, where a sector secretary An spoke, uh, can you tell us, was this during the period that uh, Ochukun was used as a security office? Uh, and can you be specific as to where exactly uh, in the area of Wat Ochukun? the meeting was held. The meeting that was held at uh, Otakun Pagoda was actually held uh, uh, right inside uh, the uh, temple. At that time, uh, there were many trees uh, inside the compound, and the meeting took place at the temple that is towards the, the west side uh, of the uh, pagoda Going to turn now to uh, another subject, uh, Mr. President. Um, do you remember a militia unit in your vous district vous that was called the Long Swan. <laughs> President interrupts. Uh, thank you, Merci. Deputy Co President. Since now you switch to a new uh, subject, à let à me sujet. take a short break. We take a break now and uh, return at 10.30. And court officer, please Merci assist the witness during the uh, brief time, the break time. Heures and invite him back into the uh, card room at 10.30. Suspension of audience.